Hey guys, I thought I would just do a real quick impromptu video on my panel so far. Spent a few hours a day cleaning up some wires and working on it. Starting out here, this is the Mini X. So, I'm going to show you. Uh, I can go to flight plan from here. The blue is the internal flight plan. I can change the internal flight plan, which will anything I change on the little guy will affect the big guy. I can also uh, go to map from here. There's a few different map pages as you can see. And then it'll go to an HSI, which is pretty good. And then uh, again if I want to I can go back to the primary flight display. Sorry about the video quality, it's kind of hard to get in on there. Okay, so here is the main HXR touch. Now if I want I can uh, I got a logbook here. Uh, there's a demo file. I can go to set menu. There's some autopilot presets that'll come up as far as setting the density altitude or setting the missed approach altitude. Um, so I can go home. I can, I, also, I can set up my alarms from here. Uh, this right here handles the altitude. And then it'll ask me if I want to go, and once I set the altitude, I can either climb at an indicated airspeed, or if I want, uh, I can set that up in the autopilot menu, and I can climb, uh, you know, at a vertical speed. I can also set the flight director on or off from here, so I'm just going to go ahead and accept the 95 knots. Uh, there is one thing I want to show you. Um, when you set the altitude, um, you'll notice there's presets here that you can set up. So you can go ahead and tell it that you want to set climb at, if you're climbing at a certain airspeed, you can climb at 95 knots or 130. You can set that on whatever you want. Okay, so here's the um, flight director that I went in and turned on. I have two insets here, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, up here I have um, the mandatory items that you need to see. So a lot of these are changeable, but as far as right here, manifold pressure, engine RPM, fuel gauge, and then this has fuel flow here. And up top, fuel pressure, uh, oil pressure, oil temp, uh, the highest CHT uh, for the cylinder, gallons per hour, again fuel flow, percent power, the voltage and then the amps. This is called the scoreboard up here. This tells you everything that's going horizontal as far as uh, what you've got, in, got dialed in. Uh, this knob right here, you'll see this changes. You'll see this changes right here when I change my heading bug. you also see it changes on the map. Now if you want to see something kind of cool, at least I think it is, if I go over here and I change the heading here, you'll see the heading bug over here change as well. So, um, again, these units are totally integrated with each other for the most part. There's a couple things. The Mini X does not handle vertical uh, as far as the autopilot, so it can't preset or uh, control the vertical autopilot, but it can control horizontal. So then as far as the other side here, as far as the scoreboard, this tells you your altitude and it handles all the different functions for your vertical autopilot. Uh, these will, there's about four positions here on each side and they'll be all lit up if you're doing like an instrument approach or something like that. Um, up at the top, you just basically have the same line that you'll have, I'll get over here in a minute, but you have the same line here. It's basically just telling you uh, what your flight plan is. Um, so, uh, scoreboard up here, horizontal here, vertical here, speed tape, altitude tape over on this side. Then you've got the HSI in the middle. 
your heading here. Um, so as far as the insets, uh, they're pretty flexible. I don't have the camera set up right now, so I can't do. I don't think I do. I don't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't. So it's just blank right now. Uh, I don't have those connected, but I can go. If I go inset here, I can do traffic. I can set it up on different what I want to see. Two miles, six miles, twelve miles. If one of the airlines flies over, you'll see it light up. Okay, so we can do inset again. I can do a map over on this side, swap them out. Um, get out of there. I can do, let's try this again, inset over here. And then uh, we can go to engine, and then that's the checklist right there. If I got a list, you can see all the different checklists that I have here. And then if we pick one, I put the emergency list up front. I'm going to have paper checklists, of course, too, but let's do a, a before start checklist just. Um, We'll load that guy and then uh, as we go through I just accept as I go through the checklist so as you can see it goes fairly fast hit the next list and then just keep going I've uh, done a lot of like I said on my blog I've done a lot of uh, crib notes in here as far as different things that I'm, I'm I'll need to stay on top of in the future um, as I build of course I'm not going to remember a lot of this stuff but uh, I wanted to try to get it as integrated as possible as I could right now. Um, so then I can go uh, flight plan here. And then if I add anything to the flight plan over here. Now if I go um, external. Now blue means it's internal to the, a the uh, HXR. These are hard to read here. I don't. Um, so I have details. External. So I'm going to go ahead and hit external. You'll see that'll change to yellow up there. That's the external flight plan that's coming off of this GPS. Now if you see here, I've got Kilo Victor, Kilo X-Ray going to Kilo Echo Whiskey November. And then that's the same thing I have up here. So if I change this, let's say that uh, I want to go down to Chesapeake. So I go direct to, and then uh, um, it's hard to see this thing on the. That's a kilo. Charlie. Papa Kilo, and then I hit direct again. Now we're going straight from present position direct to uh, Chesapeake, which is Kilo Charlie Papa Kilo. Now look up here, it's changed it up here. So you can see these two things are integrated. Now I can copy this external flight plan into my internal flight plan. So if I copy it, now that becomes my internal flight plan. Now the only difference is, is if I'm working on the internal flight plan, which is something like if I'm just flying VFR, the internal flight plan from the HXR does not port over to the Garmin GNS 480. Only the GNS 480 external flight plan operates on both. And to change the external flight plan, I have to go back to the 480 and then it'll show up on the HXR, but I can't manipulate it on the HXR. So it's kind of a fail safe. Since this right here is the WAS certified uh, navigator, GPS navigator for IFR navigation, this is not. So this has to uh, defer to the GNS 480. Now I have these. I had a problem, I'm going to detail it, uh, or I am detailing it right now, I haven't finished the blog yet post, but you'll see here that uh, yesterday, um, maybe the day before, I had a problem with these lights. They sent me the wrong 
uh, voltage. They sent me five volt lights instead of the correct 12 volt lights. So um, a couple of these were having issues. This one actually burned out, but I switched it around and uh, I, I've got, I'll put some orders in and for some new actual, the correct lights and all that. But what you can see here, this is the external enunciation. On the GNS 480, if you hit the CDI button, it'll go from GPS to localizer. So let's try that right now, or basically nav, I guess. So there you have it. So nav, localizer, that side of the house. Then you have, uh, I can switch it back. And then uh, the only other one I have hooked up right now is the suspend. So, um, and I was kind of looking at the differences in the, um, by, uh, I've got on this one right up here, I've got about a 300 ohm resistor on this one right here. I don't have that resistor. These two, however, I do have a protective diode. And then just for the 12 volt check on the suspend, I do not have the protective diode. So, um, it's not, if you saw it in real person, you'd see it's much dimmer. So I'll take that off. These are looking good. Um, so I think I'm gonna put the put I'm gonna put the protective diode in anywhere. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and put that uh, 300 ohm in all the way across on all these. One other thing that I was checking, uh, I'll show you these really quickly. Um, this right here, this over range right here, the MGL uh, outside air temperature probe does not, um, gives me about five degrees less than what I get off of the HXR. And the HXR is correct because it always matches what's inside my house. So I tried putting an HXR OET probe on the MGL um, clock here just to test it out and it did not, it, it's not reading it as you can see the overrange. So I guess I'm going to have to contact MGL and see if I can uh, somehow, I, normally you just can't get in there and uh, tweak it as far as the setting. So I'm going to have to see if they'll allow me to, to tweak it. Okay, the Trio Pro Pilot Autopilot. Uh, I really do like this thing. It's a, it's a great autopilot. I wanted it external from the EFIS because you can get internal um, autopilots for the HXR. Um, this screen isn't showing up very well at all on this, uh, on the video of course. It's a very rich uh, screen. So let me show you really quick. I'm gonna get rid of this and set, put the map back in there. And then I can do different, um, if I go here and then I go more, I can do, um, let's see here, maybe not. Let's go over here and uh, screen and then I can split these so I can do a, a map plate and then um, let's see here plate um, we'll do a list this is CK, CPK which is our KCPK so let's uh, pull up Right now, I know I'm getting off track. I was talking about the autopilot, but let's go ahead and pull this up really quickly. Um, so there, wow, all right, this is really bright. Maybe that gives you a better idea. Okay, so there, I can pull up the uh, the uh, approach plate. So this is, um, I can, uh, this is for, again for the CPK. I'm gonna have to go in or out the RNAV GPS runway 5. So um, this I can turn the traffic on or off specifically to show it on here. That doesn't affect the other traffic for my other stuff. Um, so let's get out of here. Let's go screen again. I can do PF, the primary flight display, the PFD and the plate. So you can see those are just a couple of the different um, options screen again. I've got PFD options, map options. Uh, if I want to go to terrain, I can do terrain and then uh, go back. 
and then we'll do map and the plate so you can see there now here's another cool feature if I want I can go to the um, the map options and I can go to chart there's the sectional popping up sorry if I'm getting I'm trying to look underneath the phone as the camera and then I can go to uh, the IFR low I don't have the IFR high loaded up but so that's you can see it's it's got a lot of flexibility here I haven't obviously explored all of this but I've just been trying to figure out enough to to make it so that the hardware as far as switches and whatever I need inside the cockpit I can figure out so um, let's go back to screen and we'll just go back to uh, primary flight display now over here I have the checklist I want to get rid of that so I'm going to go here engine stats combo and then uh, there's that okay back I'll uh, stop straying back onto the um, trio profile autopilot this has I'm just gonna point out something really quick it's getting no GPS from here because this is in the simulator mode so here we've got um, um, these lights that are flashing I don't, let me get up here and see if you can see that the GPSS right there and the GPSV, GPS steering and GPS steering vertical. Um, those are basically what allow you to do a full loss, like an LPV or an LP plus V. Uh, it gives you vertical guidance as far as the GPSV, uh, full roll control steering. So anything, so normally, especially on, uh, if you're doing a flight plan and you get into an area where, uh, you're being given vectors or something like that. With this, if um, if I go heading here on the lateral autopilot and set that up, then as I control my heading bug with the left knob, then it just um, it just follows that takes me wherever I want to go as far as the autopilot and then uh, you know if, if uh, ATC or center or somebody gives me higher then I just push here um, or let's say they give me lower to 8,000 feet once I just dial that in and uh, it'll the vertical steering on the autopilot will just kick in and and uh, take me right up to there if I have the the vertical servo turned on so that's about it uh, just to, I know it's not actually didn't turn out to be a quick overview but you know me I'm somewhat loquacious again real quick CDI here GPS uh, the nav side as far as using the nav radio uh, suspend right there that'll be a different color light uh, it'll be brighter as well um, I think it's white. Uh, these are a little bit, I just pulled a different LED just to check it out. All right, so um, really quickly, I'm going to go back to, uh, let's see here. No, I'm going to go to screen map options. Uh, I'm going to turn this to terrain and then uh, go home and then there you have it. Here's the range for that. Now, uh, once I get my COM2 radio, it'll be set up in here and then the transponder functions will be over here. Uh, with the transponder that I have, the remote one, once I hit the uh, the code, all these soft keys will light up zero through nine and I just punch it in and I'm done, or zero through seven, whatever. Um, so that's it. Uh, again, this is just kind of an impromptu thing to show you what I've been working on and kind of show you the panel in action so thanks for watching take care guys cheers out here